because I want you that you experience the same that the students who present in the 3 and T, in the three minutes thesis, okay? So, this is what I have from Tatiana. And what I'm going to show you is the training I do with the students. And now when I ask you her, so who is the audience? And she was telling me people, your countries and everything. I was thinking, I never present this for an academic which I present for the students. So I'm going to treat you like a student. And why is that? It's because I want you that you understand what is this. And if you don't face the problem, you will not understand what is the communication skills that require free and clean. Okay? Could you please sit down here for them? Because we have to do an activity together. Okay, so we're going to look through all of these effective communications, but some parts of the presentation I'm giving you will be specific for the three minute thesis, okay? Did you hear before about the 3MT competition, three minute thesis competition? Did you hear before? No. no. One German have heard because he was in the final, <laughs> so at least someone of you know. Okay, so before to design your presentation, we need to think about this question, which are, you need to summarize the objective of your presentation in one simple sentence. Not in a paragraph, not in a page, in a sentence. That's it. Quick, quick, because there's no time. You need to be quick. Secondly, you have to list what items you need in order to show your idea. All the graph, diagrams, photograph, image, everything. Put in your head. Okay? Now, you need to think about all these items. Can't say my idea? Because the problem that we have, I'm more aware of the academics, is that we think that all research is the best in the world. And probably it is, but I don't know. So you need to make the extra effort to show why, okay? Not everyone will understand what you're saying. So you need to think about, they understand, yes or no? And finally, the kind of information you are going to provide in your presentation in order to support your slides. So at the moment I have this slide, and I'll give you my presentation. By my voice, intonation, my body language, my eye contact. So we have two presentations. One is the slide, which could be the poster, could be the PowerPoint, and my presentation. Two presentations for the price of one. We never think about the two sides, okay? So we need to think about that. <coughs> so just to give you an idea of what is the three, the three MT competition, the rules are one single slide, one only, has to be a study. That's one. And in one, you have to fit all the information. You want to read in one slide? Yeah. For all three For the three MT competition, three. one slide one side. with all the information. Okay? okay? Let's make more difficult the three MT. You cannot have additional media, so sounds, animation, forget it. That's out. It's just you and the slide, nothing else. You cannot play instrument, you cannot dance, and we have the case that someone dance. You cannot swap, you cannot sing, so nothing. You cannot take attention with all those these things. Why not? Because it's a study. By you and the slide, you have to drag the attention. Yeah, but if you, if you, if you dance, dance so, and then you, you wrap yourself, <laughs> so it's still you and your slide. No, because then you will not be in the same conditions the rest of the, the people who are competing will not be in the same condition as you because you are a professional rapper, you will get the attention of everyone, right? And the rest that they are doing signs, whatever, will be like, oh, that's my, my stroke. That's why I can't uh, use so, uh, so uh, effective uh, tools as poems, rap songs uh, to... This is the rule. Yes. Take it or leave it. <laughs> it's difficult, right? It's difficult. But we have to stick with this. We have to stick with this. Then let's make more difficult. You have only three minutes. Whoever of the participants
participants run one single second, is disqualified. Out. You have to do in three minutes. One slide, no animation, and three minutes. Only three. No reference. I cannot have my paper with me. I never have. But this is no way to have notes with you. You can only read it. And uh, you have to start the presentation from the first second. Ready, go. How's that one? Did you good? <laughs> what? Well, just didn't do it. <laughs> the benefits are definitely you develop the communication skills. But I will say extremely develop. Because it's not a normal presentation. I will be reminded that you are in a normal conference and a specific of your topic and you will have time and you can improvise something. When the three, three and no, you really have the strict rules and you need to follow them. You definitely raise awareness, you make a lot of impact. And what is more important, and it's coming really important when you apply for uh, grants, that you do public engagement. One thing is to present to, into your department, to your college, and another thing is to grab the attention of the public. Anyone who is working on the street, how you take the attention of them? That is more difficult than presenting for a specific audience. Okay? And why that's important now is because I think that that was mentioned to one of your colleagues is when you apply for a grant, that money comes from taxes, right? The taxes pay it, normally ask, why I have to pay so much money if you're not giving me back? So now, the theory is, okay, if you want the grant, you need to tell us how you are going to engage with the public. And this, the 3MT, is an excellent activity to raise the awareness of your research, make more impact, and engage with the public. Okay? Definitely something that, if you do it, will be a massive impact in your CV for the career progression of your students. Because if they can express themselves in three minutes with that rules, they will be brilliant in the interviews for the job. Absolutely brilliant. So the criteria for the 3MT are basically compression and content and engagement and communication. These two parameters. So in terms of the content, they need to understand the background, okay? The significance of the background. So then they need to use a lot of hooks and take attention. Because all the research are significant, but how are they not? It needs to be uh, clear, logical. Uh, you need to again raise what is the significance of your topic. And you need to dedicate a certain amount of time for each element of your presentation. So normally the presentation is an introduction to the subject, telling you what is the objective or the problem that you try to solve. What is the result that you got or you're trying to get? And what conclusion you could get? And maybe some future work. Okay? That is the journey that you need to drive everyone. And you need to spend a certain amount of time, seconds, to explain each part. Okay? In terms of the engagement and communication, um, the most important thing is people. Do we people that is in the audience want to know more? Do they understand? Can everyone understand? If the answer is yes, yes, you make it. good presentation. Okay? What well, students say I struggle a lot is probably with the eye contact, vocal range, uh, the speed, the confidence. And I can see even the academics they do it. They use always the same monotonic, let's go like this, intonation and this one on I'm going to sleep. No, we need to encourage, engage with everyone going up and down, and up and down. We need to use our body language. We need to eye contact with everyone. And I notice a lot of you, because we are looking from that direction. Poor guys, these ones, they were completely confused. That's it, forget these people. No, you need to look everyone. You need to connect with all the audience. And in mind, the final of the three and this is a huge space. How you contact with everyone? Difficult, right? Yeah. You have to do it. So, we are going to do an activity, because this is quite 
Okay. Okay. And this is an activity I do with the students. Normally in pairs, I don't mind if you're doing three people. Matter. You have to explain at least one person in your group. If you are three, at least one person. If you are in pairs, that's one another. Explain the person next to you the purpose of your presentation. If you don't have anything in mind, you can explain uh, your last trip, uh, your favorite food, uh, your home, your country, whatever. Okay? And this is the feedback that the person should give you. Not mean feedback. We need to be positive and transform everything into positive. Say, it was clear? Yes or no? The students need to know if it's clear or not. When I do the training, it's a safe environment. It's where they can make their mistakes. After not, when it's in front of the audience, there's no way to correct. Okay, so we need to give during the training the chance to make mistakes. The students need to know that they grab the attention because all of them they think that they're fine, and most of them they are not. It is too general, too specific as well. You need to know: Are you speaking to a specific? Too general because depending on how you're speaking, you need to tailor your communication depending on who is listening. And finally, if you would like to listen more, most of the people in my experience say, Yeah, I want to listen more, but I bet that they don't. Okay, so you need to make it interesting. Whatever you decide, your research or whatever trip, home, uh, food, whatever, but just choose an item, okay. Do you have something in mind already? And to make more fun, I'm going to put a chrono. The same chrono that in the 3 and T. And you will feel the pressure for the three minutes. If you go after three minutes, you're disqualified. Okay? <laughs> So, how do you feel, guys? Good? Yeah. <laughs> you can say bye, but horrible, I will not do it, no way. <laughs> Tell me, good and bad things, you can say, we are in a free environment. Say, good, only good? It would be nice to have some time to think about it. Like, I give you time. Because I pick up the topic. But then I realized that I haven't actually thought about what I'm going to say and then like to plan the time. Yeah. It would be really nice to have like five minutes. Do you think that five minutes? You need five minutes? No, to like to collect my... No, no, I'm asking. Do you think that with five minutes would be fine? Five minutes before three minutes. Yeah, five minutes before Do you think five minutes? Do you think that five minutes would make a good presentation? No, better than this one. German, how many minutes did you spend preparing your 3 and three? A lot of minutes preparing, but presenting only three, yeah. And it's but how many days? How many days? Uh, Too many. That's the reality. Yeah. You spend A week days or so. and days and days. So we'll give you with that. It's okay. You can say, oh, but you didn't give days. Oh, otherwise, that would be good. You need to spend the bad to know. Okay, now I know. Now I know. You need to spend days, we have, we have, repeat, repeat, repeat. This is extreme presentation. What I saw, I like to analyze people how they're presenting. In this group, they use a student. They were like, oh, we want to say, we use a student. In this group, I have, oh, I don't know what to say now. This is where okay, more or less. This one, I don't know what you were talking, you were chatting, laughing, asking, asking questions. And in this one, they ran out of time and they were wanting to ask questions. No, it's three minutes, you need to fill up. One bad thing about this group is that he finished 15 seconds before. And you say, 15 seconds? 15 seconds is nothing. Well, it's huge. Everyone who go to the final of UK, Finish exactly in the last second. It's how you have to finish. 
you do it by <laughs> repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> Probably I will see you Tatiana the next year you present. Oh yeah. Yeah. Eva Simonas, next year you are in PMT. <laughs> You're going for training now. You're okay. One question. Whatever is the subject that you were presenting, did it grab their attention on how the person it was presenting? Or the person who was presenting, did you think that you explained in a certain way that could grab the attention? Be realistic. Be too nice. Yourself. What do you think? For example, you. Yes. Hmm? It was nice? The attention was around, but then we wanted more information. <laughs> okay. How was him? Uh, so it was something very specific, and, and I can see nothing. Absolutely. So now you know. <laughs> so now you know. <laughs> So that's good. We are on time to fix. It's what we need to pass to the student. You come to this training, now it's time to change. Now you are learning by mistakes, okay? So you now experience how difficult it is. It's really difficult. I didn't do it when I was doing my PSE, and I bet I would be really bad. It's difficult, okay? What? Thank you for participating in the activity. So what I'm going to show you is what you should have in order to design a good presentation. And this is based on the... <laughs> this is based on my own experience, okay? When I was a student, I made a million of mistakes. And until you don't go and present, you don't know. But then I made the mistakes. And then I went to another conference, and I always I was awarded. Okay? So that is based on my mistakes that I like to pass to the rest of the people. So what should be in the content? As I mentioned before, an introduction, raw material method, design, conclusion, sensation, acknowledgement. The students don't know who to say thank you. Or if they should have that part, they don't have to. This is what I posted, okay? In the 3MT completely changed. In the 3MT, what is important is what is your story. You can't disseminate that information with just one single photograph or with one single graph. But you need to highlight what is your story. Okay? I think the poster is like any poster that you are driving on the road, like a McDonald's. What do you see? A lot of text about McDonald's and how they do it and the profit and the benefit? No! They put a photograph of the burger. Because what they sell is burgers, chips, nuggets, so you feel hungry and it's appealing to you. So the same with the poster. You need to put something, an image that is appealing to people, okay? So if your research is about technology, OLEDs, a screen, you will need to put a screen there. So everyone knows what you're talking about, okay? Normally, the graphic and that include image, table, um, anything that you can imagine, it takes most of the part of the space of the poster, okay? And then some text, that's for poster. I will not recommend too much text for the 3 and slide. And then, as you can see, the space is really important. By the space in the slides, we define the difference between introduction, method, design. We don't use uh, space and we put everything there. People don't know what you're talking. They, they don't understand the difference of where we are. In the introduction, the result, the conclusion of where we are. So you need to put the space. In the three p presentation, as I said, one slash, you need to look, uh, use a lot of space. You can use a quote. I saw people use Einstein quote. However, most, more, I think that I saw more than 90% of the quotes which appear on the internet and say that they are from Einstein, they are not from Einstein. So be careful what you copy, okay? And then text. Yes or no? Depends. You cannot put as much text as in a normal presentation because it's just three minutes. You don't have time for reading. You don't have to, okay? Now, this is the key element for any presentation that you do it, and I hope that you know who is your audience. If you don't know who they are, your presentation is not going to be good. 
It's not about you, it's about you guys. Who is listening? So, to know them, you need to ask yourself how much they know about you. What are the aptitudes? And I mean aptitudes as if you are presenting something that is controverted or, you know, that people maybe agree or don't agree. Like an example. Let's say that my research is about Brexit and I'm in the UK. I bet some people will be happy with Brexit. Some people will not be happy with Brexit. So I need to be careful what I say. Okay? Think about what is the opinion that's going to affect the others. It's going to be making people stand up and leave in the room. That's not going to be good for me. Okay? How interesting are the topics? They are really interesting. So these people that this is really specific to your topic. And what they are the needs. A lot of people don't think about what they need. The students will need to learn, need to listen, and don't sleep in front of you. So make interesting your presentation. Okay? The same way the students they don't think about the judge needs. When the judge go and judge the poster presentation, they don't think that they are human beings, that they need to eat, drink, go somewhere, have a break. They don't think about that. They go, the judge arrives, and they say, Hi, my name is Imandres, and this is my presentation, blah, 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 blah. And they don't stop. They don't stop. They don't think about it. So you need to explain this quite well to the students, and they need to understand. <laughs> so, there are three types of audience, and I hope that you agree with me. So, it's the special audience, which are specific for your research topic. So, in that place, students can use jargon, acronyms, model S, be really specific on the information, okay? Then there is a relative audience, which could be maybe people around your university, in your department, in your college, that they are similar kind of research area, but not in your team, or they do not a lot. And the general audience, which are for the 3 and T. Most of the people don't know anything. So you cannot use specific uh, vocabulary, you cannot use jargon, acronyms, forget it. So if you use, you have to explain. Okay? And more important, you need to use hooks. You need to take the attention, explain to them where they can find your research in the daily life. If they cannot see in their real life, they will not understand you're talking about. Whatever is the application, okay, the student needs to step back and understand what my research is applied for. Okay, take whatever, planes, cars, phones, uh, social life, uh, human rights, okay, take it and explain it from that. Okay? The text. If it's a poster, the students always forget the size of the poster. Why? They don't check the end guideline. Depending on the size of the poster, they need to check the size of the text. Simple, right? I think, well, the students forget that. You ask for the A1 and they turn up with the A0. Uh, the students are also don't know who is the author of the poster. You as academic, who do you think that they should put as an author? Yourself? <laughs> no. What do you think? No answer? So I have the answer for from the student. The academics? Who are the author of a presentation? So when the student has to design the poster, they have to put who is the author of the poster, right? Good name. Good name. Good name. Good name. The student, you, my mom, my dad, my uncle. If I am a student and I write, the author is student. Uh huh. Name, surname. Uh huh. Um, affiliation. Mm -hmm. Maybe the research supervisor's name. Okay. You think that that's okay? What do you think? The rest agree or disagree? Just <laughs> well, the university would be good if you put the logo. So the logo of so the And say, I'm going to for that. Logo just takes space. Say again? Logo just takes space. 
Be careful, not go extreme. As well, I always say to the students, if you use the entire rainbow, I hope that your sense is about the rainbow. Because otherwise, it doesn't make sense to me. You need to think, okay, maybe, for example, I like pink, I love pink. I don't put pink in my presentation, ever. Because I know that not everyone likes pink. So if you like, for example, the rainbow, good for you, but maybe the rest of the people don't like it. You need to think again, what is the people thinking, what they like, make life easier to the audience, don't make more difficult, right? They need to follow you, not follow you, <laughs> leaving the play, okay? The layout also explains to the students that need to follow a transition, follow the story, and sometimes they forget arrows, numbers, letters. You need to do these things in order to follow the story. If you don't do it, you don't know what is the story. What do I start? What do I finish? Sometimes it's really clear, but sometimes it's not. So never take for granted that everyone will understand. Always also these things are to the students to give ideas. You have to give ideas to the students so they can get enthusiasts and some ideas what they can use. So could be some balance, could be some of this, depending on how much text, how much image. This again is not applicable to the creative, it would be more applicable to posters. Okay? Because you can see that there's a lot of text. In terms of the graph, scientists will love graph. But we need to tailor the graph to the audience again. Because if we saw this graph here, so that, we cannot read anything. Okay, so we need to tailor to saw the information. And even if I put that in that graph, I need to say why I'm putting that graph in my presentation. What is important? What is the meaning of that? If you just put one graph because it's really good, and you don't say why, how will you understand? How will you understand? You need to say why. To make a successful presentation, you need to highlight the importance of the information. What is the objective? Okay? If you don't highlight this, with everything that you can, with the colors, with, um, I don't know, with the shape that you put in the poster, a box in the center, I don't know, if you're doing the other presentation with your body language, your intonation, people will not get it. Okay? The title should be short, always I say, the students don't listen, never mind. Um, the text should be clear and to the point. These students struggle a lot. They always don't put, they always put a lot of text and they don't know that their best friends are the bullet points. Use bullet points. Because the text in a poster, in one slide, is not going to help you. People will not stop and read the entire thing unless you're really looking for that information. It's just starting to grab attention. That huge text is not going to help you. Okay? As I say, use the color, the fonts, consistent. But definitely, what I saw through all my experience, always when I've been awarded, is because I saw enthusiasm and passion. If I didn't saw my enthusiasm and passion for my research, no way. No way. Because I really care. And I bet all your students care. You care about your research. But if you don't sew, no one knows. You need to sew. And I understand that some students are struggling with that, and even academics, they are really standby, and they don't want to talk, and they are nervous. Everyone is nervous, but forget it. This is just a performance. You need to sew, because you want to disseminate information, to transfer the knowledge, to pass to all of you. In order to do it, you need to engage with the audience. That's your aim. Forget about if you're side or not side. I'm side. I don't care. I have to do it. That's it. So, I would like to ask you, to make a successful presentation, you need to know four things. Which is the first? Who is the author? Okay, author? No, you're just subject. Subject? I don't know what you're talking about. Subject? Any other thing? Audience. Audience. Okay. Audience. Audience. This is the first thing that you need to know. Who is coming to your talk? Who is coming? I bet you know that your students are coming to your 
talked and you have been, for example, giving two talks before, so they, you guess, they know your previous session, right? So you know who is coming. But if you don't know who is coming, you need to find out. In order to design your presentation, you need to know who is listening to you. Okay? Second thing, the objective. What is the objective of your presentation? Make collaboration, uh, try to explain to the public, everything. It completely changed. Third one, your story. Then you, you drive or you write and grab all the story. I'm going to start here and I'm going to put this and I'm going to show the other. That's your story. But always in a really simple way. Don't make it complicated. People don't have time. Everything has to be in second. And finally, what the audience wants. Need to learn something from you, need to take notes, or just they are there because it's an analysis event and they want to listen, or whatever. Depends on that, you design your presentation more friendly, more formal, okay? So the last thing I want to show you is the winner of 2017, who was from UNED, he is from UNED still, he is Thomas Fudge. Um, he, so we did at Brunel, he is a great school, we organize hits for the free and free competition, one hit for each college. So all the students from whoever want to participate, for all the departments attend to that hit, they present. And then I think that depends, uh, always on the panel to choose, I think that is between two to five maximum people from each college they go to the final, and in the final, we choose the winner of Brunet. That person needs to go to the semi-final of UK, and then if he pass, he goes to the final of UK. And Thomas Fudge did. Mm -hmm. He did it because he attended to the training. So if you are bringing the 3MT competition to your institution, you need to train the students. You need to watch what they do it. And if you have the chance, go to the final of the UK because it will completely change your understanding. You think that it's a normal presentation? It's not. It's extreme presentation, public engagement. It's not the typical academic conference presentation, okay? So, let's have a look. I hope the, the sound works.
working on that pay system. But I found it was a social enterprise and a good partnership with NGOs. And we are aiming to develop a pilot study system that we can test in Ugandan refugee camps. So we can look at the feasibility of the whole thing. And eventually, I want to change sanitation from a model that's an economic drain to one that generates revenue from the extractive elements to gain that crucial investment in this sector and eventually empower locals so they have the tools, the job opportunities that they need so they can alleviate themselves from poverty. Thank you. So the slide, the slide is the one that they come out um, on the editing of the video. So this thing that you saw a kid with few graphs, do you remember? One point of the presentation they come on a slide. Only one second. Yes, but you, in doing the presentation, you have behind the slide. So it's like a me talking to you, and, and this is my slide, behind him. Can't look. Can't look. Can't look. Can't look. And behind Can't him is the clock. He cannot look. Actually, it's worse. If you look, it's worse. You make more nervous. It's better. The way to do it, and it's honestly how it works, is practice a lot of times. Every time that you can go and go and go and go, and you make it, you make the time. But you need to really practice a lot. So the venue how it works is in the salon of a hotel, and it's huge. So it's all full of tables with academics. Vice chancellors, chancellors, all full of academics, people that have experience, okay, teaching. And they sit down before having a dinner, and they, normally it's five, yes, it's five uh, semi finalists. They go present in a huge event, which is a, I think that from there to there, the platform, and they have to be in the center. And they have the slides, one slide there, one slide there. It's the same, but projected twice, so everyone can see, and the clock twice. They cannot see anything. Okay. All the presentations for past years are available in YouTube, B type, have a look if you can. And if you have the chance to attend to the, um, the final of the UK, please do, because it completely changed. And if you see the atmosphere, we are sitting down and we are cheering like, a, I don't know, like it's the most stunning singer that you could imagine. Uh, everyone is really I think what happened is all that some, someone who tries to drink for AMT. German, can you come here, please? This year, German has tried to drink for AMT competition. So, can we just hear what he thinks about? Uh, yes. yes, come on. Uh, can you tell about He has tried, so basically, he was one of the people who were competing and he managed to get to finals at the university. There's just one point when you mentioned uh, about the time, not seeing the time, I thought yes, that was very challenging. And during the presentation itself, I was also wondering, I'm, am I over the time now? But I was lucky because I think there was uh, like two seconds left. So it was uh, perfect, but uh, yeah. And the presentation should go by itself without you clicking. But it's slide. just one slide, yeah. so the presentation is one, 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 one slide. slide. It's one slide, that's it. Your presentation is one slide. It's like okay. poster. Yeah. It's, it's a slide. It's not printing. It's in the, the, yeah, in the projector. Oh, it's one, one single slide. Yeah, one single slide only. Yes. And the rules are like that. Uh, first, you uh, um, you say your name and the topic of your presentation, mm -hmm. and then they start the time. Okay. So you saw that in the beginning. It was the name of the person. Just like the signal to start, and then the three minutes, you have three minutes for the actual presentation. There is the, the sign. That's so okay. there's two slides, one slide with to introduce the slides. Yeah, but that is managed by children. Let me find out. This is the slide. Is the slide. This is his slide. That's it. Only nothing one. Else. Only one. There is nothing slide. else. And you need yeah. to make sure you translate the core points of your research and input that put in and why it's needed and what are major achievements and anything this in one slide. If you see for example just analyzing the slide is one kit that you will this era we always live with poverty with Africa with the lack of finding water so he used the hook of 
the kid, the cook of the map, where did you can find this? And the other book is he put really big how many billion of people have inadequate sanitation. So that is a really good. If the students come like, a, look, I have this important fact, this number, you need to take that like a book. How many people is affected? How many million of pounds of dollars are affected from that? Yes. Can I share some ideas? I really liked it. And what I, I think could be done within our consortium, at least at our university, I think it's easily done. Uh, within the consortium, we always have funding for trips of postgraduate students for summer schools or, say, for three day trips. And we could run this type of contest within our universities, and the winner will participate in one of the trips. Isn't it good? Thus, we will disseminate the information about the grant all over the university, at least. And then the students will, <laughs> the word of the mouth will say that you have to run that. The only thing trip. I have to say, if you want to run free and tea, there is a copyright. No, it's <laughs> been there. No, 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 will get a thing like one million pounds for investment in public engagement of his research or her research. Mm -hmm. That's a huge thing to say. I'm not sure about how much, I think that is one million, I don't know. But you get money to use for impact of your research. What a student doing a PhD. Wow, that's amazing. And you put this in your CV and you say, look, I did this. You're like, yeah, come to my company right now. Or come to my university right now, not that way. Right? What we want to make is a good academics, very professional. Mm -hmm. So that's like one way to do it as well. And just speaking about Elia, have you noticed how I presented to our deliverables what we have to deliver? What needs to be done and anything? How many of you started to see the impact of the project? Everybody started to see how it become a powerful message, how it will be impact and anything. You already started to build the vision of this. Isn't it not true? <laughs> yeah? So the same how Satatiana said, how do they say it will change? He used data in terms of number of people affected, an image of a kid and a mouth. What he's doing in his research is developing a device to clean water. Do you see? So he's really scientifically what he's doing, but because he knows that the audience doesn't know, he needs to use this kind of effect, hooks, to attract people, to engage. That's how you have to shoot totally the story, okay? You will not use the same if you go to a specific conference that is people talking about similar things. You're not going to use the same. But if you go, depending, so what we need to teach to the students is you need to analyze who is listening to you. Depending on that, you are that. Deliver a successful presentation. Okay. Is there a TEDx session at Brunel? Say again? Ha have you heard about it? Uh, TAD, TED. <coughs> like, uh, it's a longer presentation mm -hmm. by a more experienced person. From ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's TEDx, it's local. I, yeah. I, so TED is in San Francisco or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. Uh, and TEDx, TADX, is mm -hmm. local, so it can be organized everywhere in the world. Like in Belgrade, in Moscow. Yeah. Uh, in American universities, is, is there the same session in Brunel? We ran it something similar a few years ago, a ton of students went to, but it was just, I don't know if they ran it again, I'm, I'm not sure to be honest. But, but I think that in the, in the community, a more of it for science people, as, as students in science, uh, we need to break the barriers of how we disseminate information and how we engage with everyone. For example, I'm part of the Royal Society of Chemistry, and one of the things that I do in the in the society actually is to create a platform that everyone can disseminate for the general audience and it's called it uh, the chemist challenge competition so people come from universities around london and they present their research and we give people the topic and they are able to present whatever is the topic whoever is coming so i think the last year the winner was a student who was presenting about a chemist who found um a radioactive something i don't remember so it was quite difficult just it was based on that 
Um, this year, the focus is the periodic table, so they have to focus on elements or people that discover elements. So to make more attractive, we need to make platforms where the students can disseminate better and be able to engage with everyone. Because not everyone of your um, students will end up in academia. In fact, more than 90% of your students will go out of academia. So they need to be able to present what they have done during their experience to anyone. So that's an important factor. Not everyone, well, majority of people don't stay in academia. So we need to change the chip of mentality of how to deliver a presentation. Any other questions? No? Okay. Uh, what about the system of judgment of such kind of competition? Here for, Brunel, for, Brunel, for, the judges. for Brunel, what we do it is we create a panel for, for the kids that they are coming from the college, so specifically from the college, but they are not related to the student research area. And they cannot know this, uh, the student, or they know just really vaguely. Um, then for the final of Brunel, we asked, for example, last year for the vice chancellor. Uh, Marianne, for example, it was in the panel, the Vice Provost of Education, a student experience. Uh, uh, Professor Isayan uh, inspired uh, the poem by, do you know who I mean? Um, I think that he was with you in the final last time. Yeah, Tatiana I, I, yeah, was I think he was with you in the final as well, yeah. yeah. So we choose people kind of really high profile, and they, they need to see how we do it. And it's, it's quite interesting because they can see the impact and as well, it's good to do in, in institutional level. So if you disseminate what is going on in the university, you make impact, like uh, you invite people from outside the university, and you say, look, this is what we're doing up in We are great, we're doing this. You have to sell the idea. I, I can tell you, I've been judging in finals at university a couple of times, and the normally panel is uh, with people from completely different uh, subjects, like, for example, we have someone uh, from poem, from biology, engineering science, so basically the panel consists of people of different subjects. We normally, what we teach, we mark blindly everyone and often we get conversations. Surprisingly, regardless what subjects the people we were looking for, we were a majority of cases where we were catching exactly the same consensus, who is first, who is last, and maybe some small minor shift, but it was like, sort of, it's basically, it doesn't matter what background you have in Fulatim, because we, were, we never had situation when we were judging, it's like, sort of, no, this one is not good, and so on. So basically, when we were looking on criteria and anything, and so on, it was always clearly see one or two or three people like sort of strong in Fulatim. And it's I think it's really obvious, when you run the final of the kids in the institution, it's really obvious who's good and who's not that good. Not bad, we don't say bad. They need to learn as well that whatever they do it is not appropriate and they have time to change and adapt and do it again. Yeah. And what is this system? You have like, uh, you have like scorecards or just... Uh, yeah, it's not like you have a score. You have a score with the uh, recite criteria. Like yeah. Time, yeah, 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 yeah. The criteria that I saw before, so the comprehension, yeah. engagement, and the content. So it's yeah, kind yeah, of two yeah, parameters. It's not like sort of I like it or I don't like it, yeah. Okay, so not yes or no, or just scoring? Uh, no, no, it but it's a scoring, so, but, but it's not such a thing, you know, so if you start to speak if you like or you, uh, you don't like, you start to get your personal opinions, I like I like this person, I don't like, no, there are some criteria, and you just follow the criteria. And then you discuss? In each, yeah, but and I can tell you, in majority, but there are some, the marking could be changed very in, between the criteria, mm -hmm. But in majority cases, the final outcome, who is the best, who is not, mm -hmm. is very much consistent. So you could, when you watch it, you could really see it coming up. And then always the winner pick all the boxes. It's impossible. If you are good, you're good in the content, you're good in engagement, you're good with everything. And like most of the kids in the time. And to be honest, like, I've seen the student progression as well, because I was in the college hit-ups yeah. as well. Yeah. And uh, when you see, like, the, start, the students started with college hit mm -hmm. they are not competent, they are not full of in and anything, and after that, once they've been selected to go for finals, they go through additional training. Yeah, and in, in one month's time, you see them at university, you look at them and say, wow. It's nothing to they do really with really develop their skills mm -hmm. and anything. So you really, like, it brings them life because you've seen them, you saw them literally uh, <laughs> a month ago. 
not being like, yes, we are relatively good, but not still quite a lot of enough, and suddenly we developed so much. So the, the students, what we do is, is we put the call like up, look guys, this is a PMP, we put on the in front of the news, we send emails to all the PMP students, the supervisors, PIA, say, look, it's coming to PMP, please encourage your students to sign. Then we start to run training before the kids. So um, I mean, I'm running twice per week, we run, and the students come. Not everyone who is presenting comes to the training, and they should go to the training, completely change. We completely explain everything, like uh, this is not the normal presentation, so you do it. They adapt to that, they go to the kids, and whoever passed the kids, we really highlight to them that they have to come to the training. It's not compulsory, but again, you need to improve, and they have time to improve. And then on the final, whoever you see on the final, and whoever signed in the beginning that sent me, for example, an email saying, Emma, can you have a look at my slide? And the person who goes to the final, that slide is totally different. Nothing to do. One they send you, and it's like, no, 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 no. And the one that arrives to the final is absolutely perfect. Uh, all the presentation are based on uh, their own uh, own research, or not some research. It's their own what they are doing, their scope of research, their aim of research, deliverables, what they achieve, and anything and so on. All these three minutes. But uh, but uh, the main uh, so you uh, you assess only the presentation or uh, the quality of. Uh, uh, as well, like the impact on anything, but you must understand the impact, they must understand how they pedagogically were pulled in, how they justify their methodological issues, how they are going to deliver. So it's all this is there, it's not only presentational skill. Another thing that the students, when they see three minute thesis, what they think that they have to do at the end for the thesis, it's not the presentation of your thesis. You cannot present your thesis, that's impossible in three minutes. So we have cases from Thomas Hart, he was from the first year. So if you listen to the presentation, he said, I'm going to try to, I've been doing this in the lab, I'm going to do this next. In the last year, this year, he was one of the finalists, he was first year as well, and he was just, he didn't have any results, but he was presenting. But the way that he was presenting and making aware everyone of the subject, he was brilliant how he was doing. So always the students, you will have, if you run trainings, I found that the students say, oh, I don't have results. So what? You are researcher. You need to think further. What do you think that is going to happen? What is hypothesis you think that you can elaborate? The students need to work more and than you, where they are. If you will speak with Thomas now, yeah, he has done this. He delivered. He delivered what he promised. Because in his mind, in any way, he knew clearly how he needs to achieve it, what needs to be done, and pull it in. So it basically doesn't make them think only how to present it. It does make them think what is necessary to deliver. Pull it in. So it's case of all these things around. Okay, fine. Thank you very much, Inma.